Introduction What are you searching in this shelf? My biology book is not here. Uh, today my biology teacher announced that there will be a written test of biology tomorrow. So what is the topic of your test? Cell cycle and cell division. Uh, can you please help me? Okay, I tell you about the different phases of cell cycle and cell division. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to Define cell cycle Understand the various phases of cell cycle Know about M phases and its different stages Describe the significance of mitosis Know about meiosis and its different stages Describe the significance of meiosis what is cell cycle? The cell is the structural and functional unit of life. All cells produce by dividing into two with each parental cell giving rise to two daughter cells each time they divide. These newly formed daughter cells can themselves grow and divide giving rise to a new cell population that is formed by the growth and division of a single parental cell and its progeny. The process by which the cells arise from pre-existing cells is called cell division. Actually, it is a very important process and found in all living organisms. During the division of a cell, DNA replication and cell growth also takes place. Now let us know cell cycle. The sequence of events by which a cell duplicates its genome synthesizes the other constituents of the cell and eventually divides into new daughter cells is termed as cell cycle. You'll be surprised to know that the replicated chromosomes, DNA, are distributed to daughter nuclei by a complex series of events during cell division. Now let us know about the phases of cell cycle. Phases of cell cycle the cell cycle is divided into two basic phases, interphase and M phase or mitosis phase. The M phase represents the phase when the actual cell division or mitosis occurs and the interphase represents the phase between two successive M phases. The M phase starts with the nuclear division corresponding to the separation of daughter chromosomes, karyokinesis, and usually ends with division of cytoplasm, cytokinesis. The interphase, though called the resting phase, is the time during which the cell is preparing for division by undergoing both cell growth and DNA replication in an orderly manner. First, let us know about various stages of interphase. The interphase is divided into three further phases. G1 phase or gap 1, S phase or synthesis phase, G2 phase or gap 2. Now let us know each in detail. G1 phase corresponds to the interval between mitosis and initiation of DNA replication. During G1 phase, the cell is metabolically active and continuously grows but does not replicate its DNA. S phase or synthesis phase marks the period during which DNA synthesis or replication takes place. During this time, the amount of DNA per cell doubles but not the chromosome number. During the G2 phase, proteins are synthesized in preparation for mitosis while cell growth continues. Some cells do not divide further, exit G1 phase to enter an inactive stage called quiescent stage GO of the cell cycle. Cells in this stage remain metabolically active but no longer proliferate unless called on to do so depending on the requirement of the organism. M phase and its stages. M phase is also known as mitosis phase. 
Since the number of chromosomes in the parent and progeny cells is the same, it is also called as equational division. Mitosis is divided into the following four stages. Prophase, Metaphase, Anaphase and Telophase. Let us know them in detail. First stage of mitosis is prophase. It follows the S and G2 phases of interphase. In the S and G2 phases, the new DNA molecules formed are not distinct but intertwined. The completion of prophase can thus be marked by the following characteristic events. Chromosomal material condenses to form compact mitotic chromosomes. Chromosomes are seen to be composed of two chromatids attached together at the centromere. Initiation of the assembly of mitotic spindle, the microtubules, the proteinaceous components of the cell cytoplasm help in the process. The second stage of mitosis is called metaphase. At this stage, metaphase chromosome is made up of two sister chromatids which are held together by the centromere. Small disc-shaped structures at the surface of the centromeres are called kinetochores. These structures serve as the sites of attachment of spindle fibers to the chromosomes that are moved into position at the center of the cell. The plane of alignment of the chromosomes at metaphase is referred to as the metaphase plate. The key features of metaphase are spindle fibers attached to kinetochores of chromosomes. Chromosomes are moved to spindle equator and get aligned along metaphase plate through spindle fibers to both poles. Now let us know next stage of mitosis, that is anaphase stage. It is the third or next stage of mitosis. At the onset of anaphase, each chromosome arranged at the metaphase plate is split simultaneously and the two daughter chromatids begin their migration towards the two opposite poles. This stage is characterized by the following key events. Centromeres split and chromatids separate. Chromatids move to opposite poles. Next stage is telophase. It shows the following key events. Chromosomes cluster at opposite spindle poles and their identity is lost as discrete elements. Nuclear envelope assembles around the chromosome clusters. Nucleolus, Golgi complex and ER reform. Do you know that mitosis accomplishes not only the segregation of duplicated chromosomes into daughter nuclei, karyokinesis, but the cell itself is divided into two daughter cells by a separate process called cytokinesis at the end of which cell division is complete. Significance of mitosis Till now we have learnt about various stages of mitosis. Now let us see what is the significance of mitosis. Significance of mitosis Mitosis results in the production of diploid daughter cells with identical genetic complement usually. The growth of multicellular organisms is due to mitosis. Cell growth results in disturbing the ratio between the nucleus and the cytoplasm. It therefore becomes essential for the cell to divide to restore the nucleocytoplasmic ratio. A very significant contribution of mitosis is cell repair. The cells of the upper layer of the epidermis, cells of the lining of the gut and blood cells are being constantly replaced. Mitotic divisions in the meristematic tissues, the apical and the lateral cambium result in a continuous growth of plants throughout their life. Meiosis and its stages. Now let us move on to next topic that is meiosis. As we all know that the production of offspring by sexual reproduction includes the fusion of two gametes, 
each with a complete haploid set of chromosomes. Gametes are formed from specialized diploid cells. This specialized kind of cell division that reduces the chromosome number by half results in the production of haploid daughter cells. This kind of division is called meiosis. The key features of meiosis are as follows. Meiosis involves two sequential cycles of nuclear and cell division called meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 but only a single cycle of DNA replication. Meiosis 1 is initiated after the parental chromosomes have replicated to produce identical sister chromatids at the S phase. Meiosis involves pairing of homologous chromosomes and recombination between them. Four haploid cells are formed at the end of meiosis II. Meiotic events can be grouped under the following phases. Prophase I, Metaphase I, Anaphase I and Telophase I come under the meiosis I, while Prophase II, Metaphase II, Anaphase II and Telophase II come under the meiosis II. Now let us know each phase in detail. The first stage of meiosis 1 is prophase 1. It is very long and more complex in comparison of prophase stage of mitosis. It has been further subdivided into the following five phases based on chromosomal behavior that is leptotene, zygotene, Pachytene, diplotein, and dikinesis. During leptotene stage, the chromosomes become gradually visible under the light microscope. The compaction of chromosomes continues throughout leptotene. This is followed by the second stage of prophase 1 called zygotene. During this stage, chromosomes start pairing together and this process of association is called synapsis. Such paired chromosomes are called homologous chromosomes. Electron micrographs of this stage indicate that chromosome synapsis is accompanied by the formation of complex structure called synaptonemal complex. The complex formed by a pair of synapsed homologous chromosomes is called a bivalent or a tetrad. However, these are more clearly visible at the next stage. Next stage, pachytene is comparatively longer than previous two stages. During pachytene stage, bivalent chromosomes now clearly appears as tetrads. This stage is characterized by the appearance of recombination nodules, the sites at which crossing over occurs between non-sister chromatids of the homologous chromosomes. Crossing over is the exchange of genetic material between two homologous chromosomes. Crossing over leads to recombination of genetic material on the two chromosomes. Recombination between homologous chromosomes is completed by the end of pachytene, leaving the chromosomes linked at the sites of crossing over. Pachytene stage is followed by diplotene stage. The beginning of diplotene is recognized by the dissolution of synaptonemal complex and the tendency of the recombined homologous chromosomes of the bivalents to separate from each other except at the sites of crossovers. These X-shaped structures are called chiasmata. The final stage of meiotic phase 1 is dikinesis. This is marked by terminalization of chiasmata. During this phase, the chromosomes are fully condensed and the meiotic spindle is assembled to prepare the homologous chromosomes for separation. By the end of dikinesis, the nucleus disappears and the nuclear envelope also breaks down. Dikinesis represents transition to metaphase. After completion of prophase 1, metaphase 1 takes place. 
In this stage, the bivalent chromosomes align on the equatorial plate. The microtubules from the opposite poles of the spindle attach to the pair of homologous chromosomes. Anaphase 1 is the next stage. In this stage, the homologous chromosomes separate while sister chromatids remain associated at their centromeres. Anaphase 1 is followed by telophase 1. In this stage, the nuclear membrane and nucleolus reappear, cytokinesis follows, and this is called as dyad of cells. Although in many cases the chromosomes do undergo some dispersion, they do not reach the extremely extended state of the interphase nucleus. The stage between the two meiotic divisions is called interkinesis and is generally short-lived. Interkinesis is followed by prophase 2. Meiosis 2 is initiated immediately after kytokinesis, usually before the chromosomes have fully elongated. In contrast to meiosis 1, meiosis 2 resembles a normal mitosis. The nuclear membrane disappears by the end of prophase 2. The chromosomes again become compact. After prophase 2, metaphase 2 takes place. At this stage, the chromosomes align at the equator and the microtubules from opposite poles of the spindle get attached to the kinetochores of sister chromatids. Similar to mitosis, Metaphase 2 is followed by anaphase 2. Anaphase 2 begins with the simultaneous splitting of the centromere of each chromosome, allowing them to move toward opposite poles of the cell. The last stage of meiosis is telophase 2. In this stage, two groups of chromosomes once again get enclosed by a nuclear envelope. Cytokinesis follows, resulting in the formation of tetrad of cells that is, four haploid daughter cells. Significance of meiosis Till now we have learned the various stages of meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Now let us know what the significance of meiosis are. Meiosis is the mechanism by which conservation of specific chromosome number of each species is achieved across generations in sexually reproducing organisms even though the process per se paradoxically results in reduction of chromosome number by half. It also increases the genetic variability in the population of organisms from one generation to the next. Variations are very important for the process of evolution. Summary let us summarize what we have learned. The sequence of events by which a cell duplicates its genome, synthesizes the other constituents of the cell, and eventually divides into two daughter cells is termed cell cycle. The cell cycle is divided into two basic phases, interphase and M phase or mitosis phase. The M phase represents the phase when the actual cell division or mitosis occurs and the interphase represents the phase between two successive M phases. The interphase is divided into three further phases, G1 phase, S phase and G2 phase. M phase or mitosis is divided into the following four stages, prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. Mitosis results in the production of diploid daughter cells with identical genetic complement usually. The growth of multicellular organisms is due to mitosis. Meiosis is a specialized kind of cell division that reduces the chromosome number by half results in the production of haploid daughter cells. Meiosis involves two sequential cycles of nuclear and cell division called meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, but only a single cycle of DNA replication. Meiosis 1 includes prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1 
and telophase 1, while meiosis 2 includes prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, and telophase 2. Prophase 1 has five phases based on chromosomal behavior, that is, leptotene, zygotene, pachytene, diplotene, and dikinesis. Crossing over takes place during pachytene phase. Meiosis increases the genetic variability in the population of organisms from one generation to the next.